In 1998, the Japanese comedian Natsubi was stripped naked and pushed into a bare apartment believed to be in downtown Tokyo. He was then set the challenge of being able to live solely on the items which he could win from sweepstake contests. He would be released after he had won a million yen worth of prizes, whenever that may be. An edited summary of Natsubi's experiences would air on a Japanese variety show for the next 15 months, which was wildly popular with audiences. It is easy for us to see the barbarism in this piece of reality TV, in its literal stripping of the contributor of all of their earthly possessions and making them work at a seemingly close to futile endeavour in an attempt to win them back. However, is this obscure Japanese show from the late 90s actually a true representation of the machinery of reality TV? And does it prove that the medium is the perfect way to teach us all in the audience how to engage with capitalism? Reality TV first began to emerge on our screens in its current form in the early 1990s. The genre borrows from the documentary and game show in that it usually pits contestants or contributors against one another for a prize which is interspersed with confessional to camera interviews. However, more recently there has been an explosion of scripted reality series and other lifestyle hybrid shows which can be considered broadly reality TV. Often relegated to that guilty pleasure of viewing habits, reality TV is frequently seen as nothing more than a disposable distraction. However, is there something sinister taking place as the media landscape is increasingly polluted with more and more reality TV shows? Much of reality TV cultivates the self-governing activities of neoliberal subjects. It teaches participants to engage in appropriate behaviours beyond television viewing, such as continuous education and self-fashioning, as well as informed financial planning and desirable or high levels of consumption. While it may be implausible to suggest that reality TV has a direct influence on the ideology which developed long before its invention, it is worth considering the role it has in our learning to labour. Although early Marxists were mainly concerned in the industrial production of physical goods, the post-industrial economy hinges more on the commodification of feelings, images, attitudes, styles, identities and expressions of social life. All of these things are displayed with abandon by reality TV stars, who use the shows that they are contributors on as vehicles for their own brand, which with it comes access to endorsement deals that include, but are not limited to, paid social media posts, lucrative business ventures, right the way up to further advancement of their career into other areas of light entertainment. We now see that the reality TV performer is a part of the cultural industry, and often a legitimate and profitable career path. However, the most direct link we can make from reality TV to capitalism is the job search subgenre, where the prize is often a lucrative contract with a leading professional in the field that the contestants want to enter into. In these shows, it is the contestant who performs the best in a set of activities which are believed to test their acumen who wins the competition. This often involves a certain degree of either humiliation or abuse, either from their boss, their representatives, or even simply the tasks that they are being instructed to perform. In this we can see the exposed power structure of most workplaces, where employees are set targets by superiors, which often cause discomfort or distress to them, that they are expected to meet or face the consequences. More often than not, these types of shows also include an elimination sequence, where the ultimate price is paid by the contributor as they are removed from the show. Frequently, these are sequences where the harshest judgments are thrown at the contributors and they are forced to confront their failings in great detail. Contributors are commonly required to fight for their place and are offered opportunities to find fault with their fellow competitors, so they might not be the ones turned away from the programme. This replicates the rather brutal workplace practices of performance reviews, redundancies or wider structural changes which businesses go through, where workers are in a precarious employment situation. However, None of this is framed in a negative way, with the contributors seen as the ultimate beneficiaries of their own self-enterprising activities. Although it isn't just the direct representations of labour and showing us how and what to desire from our lives that reality TV is delighted in delivering to us, it has also altered the way that we ultimately engage with what is real. Maltby and Craven in 1995 suggest that 
realism is a complex term with a multiplicity of meanings. They propose that by our everyday use of the term realistic, we try to judge how far a media representation is like the reality that we understand or have experienced. Colin McCabe goes further to discuss the problem that reality TV creates in defining itself as reality, in outlining the existence and function of what he termed the classical realist text. He argues that the widespread use of realist conventions in film and television severely limit the possibilities for producing radical and politically challenging ideas, as the content which is created has to conform to the preconceived notions of reality, and thus is unable to challenge the status quo effectively, as it has to first represent it. Bill Nichols builds on this idea, and has argued that reality television presents a chaotic model of society, a decentered, ahistorical and futureless reality which denies real socio-historical, political and economic contexts. To Nichols, reality TV presents a reality which has always and will always be this way and simply cannot change. We are stuck in an ever unfolding present where there is only now and someone is recording it. This week in completing your What Have You Been Watching This Week task, see how far you can reconsider reality TV. Start looking beyond the spectacle of the screen and try to begin to question the ideologies being presented within it. Why are they there and why are we drawn to them? Also, remember to engage with the required reading. Are actors really real in reality TV? The changing face of performativity in reality television? And consider where the performative nature of the genre begins and ends.